Hello everyone and welcome to video 15 of the OCR A-Level PE Anatomy and Physiology series. Today we're going to be looking at nutritional aids, which is the second part of the ergogenic aids section. So, by the end of today's video, you should be able to explain what the different types of nutritional aids are, uh, which are available. You should be able to explain the benefits and possible risks associated with these nutritional aids. And finally, you should be able to explain the importance of hydration in relation to physical performance. So, Let's get into the video. So, as always, I'd like to pause the video here and jot down these key terms before we move forward. Here's one more slide at this part of the video. Jot these down and then we'll get into the video. So, let's look at the first one we've got here, which is carbohydrate or glycogen loading. So, there's two methods. You've got the classic method and the modern method. So, the classic method, you need to know how you do it. So, you have a depletion phase, which is four to seven days prior to your event, where you actually consume a low-carbohydrate diet and high carbs and uh, fats, sorry, and high proteins and fats, low carbs. And then you have your loading phase, which is one to three days prior to event, where you stick your carbohydrate consumption way up high, and you have a high carb diet, so you may go from consuming 150 grams of carbs a day to 600 car grams of carbs a day, something like that. Uh, that's purely arbitrary, by the way. Uh, then you have the modern method, where you actually have no depletion phase, you just have your loading phase, which is one to four days prior to your event, uh, where you consume your high carb diet. The benefits of this is, originally, the depletion phase was thought to stimulate the in enzyme glycogen synthase, resulting in greater, you know, glycogen storage. And then in the loading phase, it's said to increase, your, increase glycogen synthesis and increase your glycogen storage, which can then improve your endurance. However, you have got some drawbacks. So the depletion phase can actually cause hypoglycemia and fatigue, and the loading phase can cause weight gain due to your body holding additional water to store that additional glycogen. So what I mean by the fatigue is, um, the issue with that is you'll still be training in those you know, four to seven days prior to the event. If you haven't got any energy, your training sessions are gonna be subpar, which means that you may not actually be at your peak for that Saturday game or that Saturday race. And there are some examples at the bottom, it's like games, players, and endurance sports that you'd see these in, this, this technique in, sorry. So the next one is caffeine, and basically, caffeine is a fast-acting stimulant which stimulates the central nervous system, or CNS. You take it approximately 30 minutes prior to the event or your training, and you are supposed to take 3 milligrams per kilogram of body mass. So if you weigh 80 kilos, then you would be taking 240 milligrams of caffeine before your, you know, an hour before your training. So the potential benefits here are is it increases your mental alertness, so your decision making is, is a lot quicker and better, and it also increases the free fatty acid breakdown for energy resynthesis in that aerobic energy system. So you can actually spare your glycogen for the higher spurts of anaerobic sprinting. The potential drawbacks, however, is it is a diuretic, so it can increase the chance of dehydration, and the drawbacks of that we'll look at later on in the video. It can also cause nervousness or anxiety, which means that you may actually not perform better, so we will look at in the uh, psychology part of the course. And it can also cause insomnia, which can affect your sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're not recovering, and then you're not going to perform as well. So, creatine. What is creatine? So, basically... It is, you know, what you're doing is you're consuming the synthetic version of the amino acid. It's usually taken in powder form, and athletes will usually take three to five grams per day. The potential benefits here is it does increase your PC stores, which, you know, your ATP PC system, you can use it for 10 to 12 seconds. With this, you can actually use it for 12 to 15 seconds. And if you're weight training, that gives you an extra, you know, extra um, rep, sorry, every set. Or, you know, say, And if you're doing an extra rep every set, for weeks one end, your volume is a lot greater, so you are a lot bigger, you're a lot stronger, you can perform better. It also improves your repeated sprintability, it can promote protein synthesis, and it can speed up recovery from your high intensity exercise. However, the potential drawbacks are, it does cause weight gain due to the additional water retention to restore it, and some studies have uh, shown it's linked to gastrointestinal distress. Next one is bicarbonate. So bicarbonate is an alkaline that neutralizes acid, so it acts as a buffer to lactic acid. Uh, it's basically, you take it as baking soda or bicarbonate of soda one to three hours before your training or just your event, sorry. Um, the potential benefits here is it, it decreases the effects of both lactic acid and carbonic acid. So it delays your obla and also allows muscles to function at its, their, well, their optimal level for longer periods of time. And the two drawbacks that we can have in this course are bloating and nausea. So not that big of a deal if you really think about it. And sports that we can use it in, not usually speed endurance events such as 300 metres and 400 metres, where those, you know, that lactic acid really has an effect. 
The next one we need to look at is nitrate. So nitrate is an inorganic compound naturally occurring in green leafy vegetables made from nitrogen and oxygen. And it's usually taken in liquid form from two, for, yeah, two to three hours before your event. The potential benefits here is it does actually help increase your VO2 max at any intensity or VO2 at any intensity. It also decreases your resting blood pressure so you're a lot healthier and it also helps delay obla so you can perform at a high intensity for longer. The potential draw facts, however, is long-term usage can actually be linked to gastric cancer. But that's only in some studies. Some studies show otherwise, but you just need to know this for the course. And the sports are usually aerobic or endurance events, such as the 5,000 metres. So before we jump into the uh, hydration part of this video, let's just pause the video and jot down these key terms. Once again, guys, two more. Pause the video, jot these down quickly, then we'll move into the next part of the video. So let's look at hydration related to actual, you know, your training event. So pre-event or one to two hours pre-event, you should consume 0.5 litres of water, I should say. Immediately before your event, so I'm talking you're walking into your gym, you're about to train, you should consume about 250 millilitres of water or sports drink. During event, every 15 to 20 minutes, another 250 millilitres of water or sports drink. And post-event, basically, every 0.5 kilos of body weight you've lost due to sweating, basically, you need to just replenish that with 0.5 litres. So basically, a kilo, one litre, in simple terms. So the benefits of hydration is it regulates your body temperature, regulates your heart rate, and it maintains blood flow, allowing you to perform optimally. And the issues with dehydration is it you know, increases your blood viscosity, so your stroke volume's down, which increases the onset of blood lactate accumulation. It also decreases sweating, which means that thermoregulation is impaired. So let's quickly, the last slide here is we need to understand these, you know, why we use these different types of sports drinks. So an isotonic sports drink, if you remember, has similar glucose and mineral concentration to that of the blood uh, concentration as it is. So the benefits is it replenishes fluid loss by sweating and supplies fast-acting carbohydrates. However, it is absorbed slower than hypertonic drinks, which is the only drawback they've thought of on the course. Your examples are Powerade and Luke's Ed Sport, and these sports that you'll see them in are usually invasion games such as football. Hypertonic sports drinks, remember this is a greater glucose concentration to that of the body, so it's great for replenishing those glycogen stores post-exercise in the muscle and liver cells. The drawbacks, however, is it's not suitable during exercise um, due to the long duration. To, due to the fact that it takes a long time to digest these and a long absorption process. Examples here of the Luxet Energy and the sports you'll see these in are ultra endurance sports, such as an ultra marathon, uh, Ironman, stuff like that, where you really do need a long you know, duration of carbohydrates boosting your performance. And usually it's taken post event if it's taken at all. Finally, is hypotonic sports drinks. So the benefits of these are they absorb very quickly and it gives you hydration without that carbohydrate boost, and that's why it's absorbed quickly. The drawbacks, however, is the lack of carbohydrates make it not ideal for events lasting longer, longer than like 60 minutes because there's no carbohydrates there, so your energy levels just completely drop. And the examples here are water, basically, that's about it. So let's quickly recap what we've learned in this video. So we now understand what the different types of nutritional aids we have available. We can explain the benefits and potential risks associated with them. Uh, we can now explain the importance of hydration in relation to physical performance. Moving into the next video, we're going to start to look at aerobic training. So we need to understand the factors which affect your VO2 max. We need to understand ways of measuring your cardiorespiratory capabilities. And we also need to understand both the short and long-term adaptations to aerobic training. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And share this video with your friends who are also studying AWP. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.